I do think Neo is currently in production hell. And what that means, I will be explaining in this video, along with some more insights about China's macro and other things. Um, while you can take a look here at the ET5 um, footage that has been actually taken over the weekend, um, you may have seen it already on my Twitter account. If you're not following me by now, you should really do that. Underscore MM85, that's my handle. And you'll find footage like this. Actually, that is a retweet by uh, for Neo Admirer, um, who's also putting out excellent content there. And by the way, let me take this chance to well, say that I'm two years into this journey now of doing a YouTube channel. I'm still struggling with this light setup, um, getting the footage right and done, cutting it, whatever. It's still a journey. So thank you guys for everyone being supportive of this channel, particularly our patrons. Now, before I'm back to Neo, let's jump in this piece of macroeconomical data that has just come out. Um, this is actually about the uh, economic situation in China. And of course, many of us have been wondering why uh, this rally in Chinese stocks hasn't been, you know, been fueled and uh, ongoing in the last couple of weeks. And basically, I do think it's mainly because of this. We have um, economic data that's coming out that's currently um, still quite a bit of a week. Although China has started to stimulate its um, economy with uh, monetary incentives, with investment and um, special programs. Um, still, we do see that uh, within last week, China has kind of uh, sort of sacked their 5.5% GDP growth goal. And now we have this um, shocking economic data that um, the purchasing manager index has been yeah, quite um, cooled down. And the data suggests that these indicators are still in a contractory mode. But if I look a bit closer here, uh, and I've done that on the National Bur Bureau of Statistics website where they publish the data, um, it seems that uh, there are 21 industries um, surveyed and 10 of them showed that um, there is an expansionary rate. Uh, within that, it's actually food, um, beverages, refined tea, special equipment, automotive and railways and ships and so this is actually um, a sector which is currently growing in china and these um, i think personally that's my interpretation are um, yeah showing that there is um, a local demand for these goods and um, it seems like the uh, domestic situation of consumption there seems to be improving in those sectors while uh, in contrary to that high energy consumption industries such as textiles petroleum coal and fuel processing and uh, some other sectors are currently contracting and um, leading to those larger declines in the pmi and i think this is indicating possibly also this um, global recession that we are entering. We've seen the data by Germany. That wasn't great. Um, the US is now um, technically in a recession, although uh, the politicians don't want to say that. Um, but I think um, we see that also for China now in July 2022, new export orders are coming in lower so that is maybe an indication that you know the, the walmarts and the targets they have built all of those big inventories and so those who are calling for a economic slowdown based on the fed policies the big um a tightening that has been taken place because of the inter uh, interest rates rising um, that might finally um, result in these um, lower growth indicators and of course uh, China right now doesn't have those domestic buffers or the, the power to really get out of it um, and if the global economy is having less demand then China's factories are surely feeling that so I'm not sure if this is entirely pointing to a problem only within China. Surely the property sector currently doesn't help a lot. And the stimulus that China is giving currently is quite targeted in my views. It's not this bazooka that we've seen in the US where everybody just basically gets some free helicopter money and can spend it anywhere. Um, China's a little bit more targeted, I would say, and also having the inflation um, yeah, rather as a significant thing that they are watching, right? And so the bottom line, and this is just my interpretation, I could be wrong about that, is that China is stimulating its economy. It possibly is only resulting in some um, better numbers in terms of the domestic um, demand, but also very targeted. 
and a slowdown in the economy uh, in the global economy will surely also have um, bad effects on China's uh, industrial output on GDP and such and I do think that we are currently still seeing this as long as the Fed is tightening as much as it is. Now back to the topic of production hell and what it means and maybe some of you have been around and been invested in Tesla already when Tesla started to produce the Model 3 in such a tent outside of its actual factory. So yeah, this is what production hell means. Um, Elon Musk and Tesla were struggling quite a bit back then to get the Model 3 uh, ramp up, up and going. And they had to um, yeah, improvise quite a bit to have um, a line built up in a tent in order to start with the production of Model 3. And there were lots of issues with that, of course, some quality issues as well as of um, scaling up issues um, by that time. And this kind of reminds me of the situation where NEO currently is in. First of all, we need to remind ourselves that NEO is currently introducing quite a few new models. And first of all, we had of course the ET7 in this year and it's now finally on the road and being delivered to customers. And the ET5 has just been shown um, in those images is actually close to going to mass production, right? And actually the, the, the ramp time for these models is getting um, faster and faster. On top of that, NEO also just started to launch uh, the ES7 uh, with some influences. So this is also a brand new model um, on top of the ET7 scale and the ET5 ramp. And so NEO is currently yeah, building this new NT 2.0 platform for three models already, currently in just one factory. And so I can only imagine how hard it must be currently and what kind of a logistical nightmare this must be. Because be aware, right now they still have the older models, the ES8, ES6, um, EC6, which have to be built in just one factory. And then there is the ET7 uh, that is currently ramping and starting to ramp. And of course, those um, production models here uh, for the ES7 that uh, are shown to influencers and are actually been driven around, they have to be built um, as well somewhere, right? And then of course, here's the ET5, which is seemingly built here at NEO Park. So this is an event that NEO has just held with pa parts of their partners and suppliers. And um, lined up, you'll see um, a couple of NEO ET5s that are possibly also going to influencers for showcase or to NEO houses, NEO spaces uh, in order to show off the cars. And the amazing news here is that, and we didn't have an update for a very, very long time, that it seems that NEO Park is finally getting ready for launching production of such of those models, um, ET5 for sure, possibly the ES7 as well. I would say the ET7 uh, on top of that, uh, because all of these are based on this latest platform by NEO, it would make sense to build all of these models in just one factory, right? And as you can see, the progress here um, by NEO um, Park um, that has been unveiled today in a video, um, the factory is getting ready, but it must be such a nightmare to build this up also just in 15 months um, build those uh, first models for the ET5 that we've just seen and at the same time basically having um, yeah those uh, three old models in the old factory plus the ET7 scaling up plus the ES7 models um, that also have to be built somewhere all of it just in one factory currently in a way because this one yeah must be barely finished by now and so this shows you like how much of a nightmare that possibly must be right now for NEO to scale to a new platform, new models and yeah, dealing with all of the supply chain issues at the same time in terms of not only batteries but also chips and also of course uh, you know if you just start with a new model and a new platform like the ET7 this surely doesn't go very smooth in the very beginning. So last month we've seen, yes, 4,000 um, deliveries for the ET7, which was a surprise in my books. Um, but um, it appears that this is also a challenge still for NEO right now. And you know, going back to this Tesla tent, um, and Tesla is a large um, um, company with very good engineering know-how, um, you know, and they are struggling. 
What do you think is going on in Neo in the, in the background right now in terms of scrambling to get these things done, get this factory ready and getting those models on the road? And so to me, it's no surprise that Lee Bin, during a speech at this um, partner event, basically said that um, their current production for the ET7 um, is uh, experiencing some pain uh, with parts. Uh, so he's speaking in front of um, parts suppliers there and said like, um, yeah, actually they could have built a couple of thousand more ET7s um, if um, they wouldn't be constrained by some of these parts. And um, well, it seems for one, uh, that's my interpretation, that um, they got some parts, but the quality wasn't good enough. And of course, Neo wants to po um, position himself as a premium quality manufacturer. They cannot just, you know, um, put out some um, low uh, mo uh, quality models out there and cars out there. That would be below Neo's scope. And so, yeah, th sometimes there are steps back, but um, imagine like how much they are, have currently to improvise on all of these levels. And I think this also explains why we really haven't seen a double shift um, kind of scale from Neo so far, because possibly they really had to um, improvise quite a bit in order to get those showcase cars up and running. You know, you don't just um, make a break in a production of the current three models and, you know, squeeze in some other cars. These are cars that are based with entirely different parts necessary. It's an entirely different um, production process. And so it's kind of surprising to see some that, you know, they didn't have to kind of build an additional line somewhere in a tent like Tesla did in order to um, yeah, build some of these models on the side. I I'm still wondering like how they squeeze everything into this one factory right now while we are seeing the second factory being built. And w basically in the moment that this factory is being built, they are pumping out already the first models in there. And so, yeah, I, I, I guess not much is coming to um, yeah into the news into the media about the real issues behind that currently right now. But I can only imagine that this is very very chaotic in the background there. And I could imagine that this could actually be going on for quite some while, maybe two three more quarters until uh, everything has smoothed out in terms of manufacturing and ramping. And manufacturing is really complex, supply chains are very complex and NEO is doing many, many things at one time, now also going global. And um, yeah, one of our Patreon members um, just posted this in our all group members chat. Um, he's just been visiting a NEO house in Oslo and um, yeah, he was really impressed by the quality of the car, um, by the way, and even his wifey liked it. So that's good to hear. But he was also saying that the ET7 should arrive by the end of August in Norway. And um, they have already sold 600 cars according to the sales um, rep there. So this also means, you know, they are sending and shipping cars overseas at the same point in time. You know, that takes weeks in preparation as well. So they are possibly in the moment as I'm recording this and as we speak, even some cars on ships somewhere on the ocean, they have to be pre-produced. Neo is entering Germany by September as well and many other European places. So um, all of this needs quite a bit of very, very complex um, preparation right now, especially in times during where COVID is disrupting the whole supply chains and logistics. And so we need to have this kind of in our minds and heads as a content um, invisible context in a way when we talk about neo deliveries i know on monday we'll see new deliveries um, we don't know whether or not there were, might have been issues um, because of the supply chain because of all of these parallel activities that have been going on that i've just mentioned here but um, i well personally and that's just my thing and i don't want to convince you but you know i don't have a doubt um, that this is a, a good product and that they're doing all the right things um, despite all of the challenges that are currently facing and it might seem messy from the outside the numbers may not be what we initially uh, are thinking of at some points in time but in the end, um, we may see it. We may have a serious chance of very much um, larger, higher numbers towards the end of this year if Neo can pull this off. 
I would personally put lots of question marks on this because I, uh, as I mentioned, like, you know, um, production, manufacturing, logistics is so complex and many things can happen and go wrong. And so still um, expect everything to happen a little bit later than um, publicly said before. Um, that should be the bottom case, the, the normal case um, and everything else that happens earlier take it as something on top of that that's personally just my opinion but i'm a long-term investor i'm not one of those traders that are you know crying out on twitter and everywhere all of the time but what do you think about it let me know in the comments i hope this was enlightening and insightful for you i appreciate your support and then see you in the next one